Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Custom Air Suspension, how you can install air suspension in your car to give the best ride and the best handling. Now, in a previous video, I talked about one of the huge advantages of air suspension, and that is it doesn't have less bump absorption with bigger loads. The ride height doesn't change. If the ride height changes like it does in a steel spring car, it gets lower with a higher load in the car, you have less room for bump absorption, and you also have a lower natural frequency. The suspension acts as if it's softer, softer with bigger loads. That's why ride comfort in a steel spring car improves with bigger loads in it. So what about air springs? An air suspension system doesn't have to do either of those things. It can hold the same ride height irrespective of load, therefore keep very similar a natural frequency and not use up some of the bump absorption capacity. But that leads us to the next question. How do you maintain the same ride height? Now, a lot of aftermarket air suspension systems just use pressure sensors. Pressure sensors are cheap and they're easy. They monitor the pressure in the different air springs, and if it's high, higher than it should be, they lower the air pressure, and, and vice versa. If it's, if it's lower than it should be, they increase it. But that presupposes that the pressure in the spring is directly proportional to the ride height, and that's not always the case. It depends on the design of the air spring. You've also got subtleties like air pressures inside the springs changing on the basis of temperature. They get hotter as you drive along because as they're bouncing up and down, as they're compressing and extending, they're heating the air within them. So no original equipment manufacturer who fits air suspension to their car uses pressure sensors to detect ride height. None of them. It's not good enough. It's not good enough if you want to maintain ride height accurately. What they do, and what I do in the book, is I use specific ride height sensors. So little sensors with a lever that goes to the suspension arm and actually measures how high the ride height is uh, on, on my car, the two front corners, and I use one for the rear. It's a, it's a torsion beam axle, so I can just take a, an average reading from the middle of that torsion beam axle. So you've got a sensor, or you've got three sensors, or you've got four sensors that are measuring ride height. What do you do with that information? Here's where it becomes really interesting. The ride height is constantly varying as you go over bumps. The suspension is moving up and down as you go over bumps. So you can't just take an instant reading. You've got to take an average reading if you're going to work out what the ride height really is. I, I vary between three and five seconds, depending on the way the car's being driven, in terms of the averaging period I'm taking for those sensors. So let's say we, we're measuring average ride height, and it's lower than we want it to be. What do we do then? Well, the obvious answer would be to open some solenoid valves, let some air flow into those air springs, and switch them off when the ride height gets to the correct level. And that's how I started with one of my systems. But what happens, and you'll see the manufacturers all doing this on their original equipment cars, what happens is the system will tend to overshoot. You're letting air into the springs, but it takes a while for everything to react. So when you turn off the, the, the solenoids, the flow of the air going to those springs, when you turn that off, when the right ride height is reached, you'll find it continues to rise for a little bit. So what I do, and what I notice my air suspension Mercedes does with factory air suspension, is I put in air in bursts. I put a burst of air in, I wait around for five seconds and see what the ride height settles at. If it's still too low, I'll put another burst of air in and so on. And if the ride height is a long way away from where I want it to be, those bursts will be longer, they get shorter and shorter as you get closer to the actual ride height. Now this isn't a video uh, to, to do in, intended to get you to design your own air suspension control system, but it's just a, a, a warning, a heads up, that a lot of commercial air, uh, air suspension systems don't maintain ride height very accurately, and they also uh, don't have systems that uh, actually creep up to the correct ride height. They tend to overshoot or undershoot, and so again, you have inaccuracy. If you really want the best ride and handling, you've really got to maintain that ride height within quite a narrow window. Uh, I started off at 15 millimeters, a bit over half an inch, and with the height I wanted to run my car on the road, that was too rough and I've actually brought it right back so I can maintain average ride height within five millimeters. So I can run quite low and yet still have sufficient bump absorption capacity. Uh, I can run higher and know that that height is being maintained very, very accurately. So the key, one of the key advantages of air suspension, which is maintaining a fixed ride height, which gives you the same bump absorption capacity and gives you a fairly constant natural frequency, is only actually achieved if you can maintain the ride height quite accurately with your control system. 
if you're buying an air suspension system, to pay a lot of attention to the control system and how small a window it can keep the ride height actually within. All covered in my book, Custom Air Suspension. The book's out now. Thank you.